Welcome fellow audio sorcerers, wizards, and gurus to my channel. I'm Dan Spencer, and I am the audio sorcerer. So this is the channel where we teach you how to affect your audio recording, mixing, and mastering skills. So in today's video, we're continuing along with my Pro Tools series, and we're talking about Elastic Audio. So Elastic Audio is an amazing tool inside of Pro Tools that allows you to timeline your audio tracks, so it's very similar to quantizing in MIDI. So before we get to this tutorial, I do want to mention offer mixing and mastering services. If you go to audiosorcerer.com, you can check out my samples and my rates, and I get 10% off to new customers. All you got to do is sign up for that email list. And if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe, and hit that notification bell to know I have new videos coming out. So with that being said, let's get to this tutorial. All right, so here we are in Pro Tools, and today we are talking about Elastic Audio. And for those who don't know what Elastic Audio is, it's basically the quantizing or fixing of timing when it comes to audio. Uh, we see it done in MIDI very often within the piano roll. We go in and fix timing. This is how it's done with audio. Now, this is great if you are recording live drums, live guitar, or you want to put in an audio sample or loop into your song, but the timing doesn't match up. This is where Elastic Audio comes into play. So the song we're going to use to test this out on is a song called Camouflage, which I've been working on. This is going to be my next single. I'll keep you guys posted on when it actually comes out. So I have a guitar octave track here, and it needs to have the timing fixed. So the way that you enable Elastic Audio is you have to go over into the track view of the track you want to work on over here. And if you look at this little thing, it looks like a funnel. Let's click on that. And then it's gonna pop up with these options here. So the first option is polyphonic, and that's gonna be for any instruments that play multiple notes at one time. So a guitar is a perfect example. The next one is rhythmic, and this is gonna be for your rhythmic instruments like drums, or if you have like a tambourine or shaker, you would use it for this. Monophonic would be for a bass guitar or vocals, although I do not recommend using Elastic Audio on vocals because there are better tools out there. Vary Speed is something I don't ever use. It has to do more with um, pitch and speed of editing uh, timing. So if you want to read up more on it, search in Google. I'm not going to show it in this tutorial. And then lastly, Xform. And we'll talk about Xform after we actually time fix this uh, octave track here and what it's used for. So with that being said, we're gonna select polyphonic here. Let's click that. So I actually already enabled Elastic Audio on this track and took it off because I wanted to show you how it worked in this tutorial. So uh, the fact that I already had enabled, the track didn't turn uh, gray. So the first time you actually enable Elastic Audio, you're gonna see your waveform here turn gray while it's analyzing the audio. So with that being said, let's go over to the waveform here and click on the down arrow and let's choose warp. So these are all the transients that Pro Tools has detected within your waveform. And what we want is for these transients to line up on the grid. And the grid is the blue behind it here. So to adjust your grid, if you don't like uh, how it looks, if you don't see enough lines in between, if you go up to grid here, you click on this, you could see that different options you have for a grid. So I'm working in the 1 8th grid right now. And the 1 8th grid probably will work fine for what we're working with here, so I'll leave it on. Sometimes I'll go up to, a, to the 1 16th grid. Those are two grids you're going to likely be working in when you're doing Elastic Audio. If you want to do any edits where you have those quick little like snare things that are almost like a, I don't know, a triplet really fast, I guess it's more in like maybe dubstep and, and uh, trap music, uh, you might have to go as far as 132 or 164 if you want to make edits like that. So going back to our track here, so the way you do this is you got to kind of look and see where your waveform is lining up and if it is making sense. So what I see here is I see, you know, some pretty good playing right there. I see that this is kind of far off. These are in between here, so these are pretty much way off. Um, I see that this note here is probably the beginning of the phrase right here. You kind of got to understand, you know, your downbeats and such and your performance. So I played this guitar part, I know how it works. So why don't I actually just let you hear it real fast. So 
so it's just a little octave part. Actually, I have a double of it here that I played. So this one's already been time aligned. So what I recommend doing is doing it in sections. And that's what's kind of nice about Elastic Audio. You don't have to just do the whole track at one time. So if I highlight this, uh, how about we'll just start right here. We'll highlight this. And if we do Alt Numeric 3 on a PC, it will launch your event operation window here. And I guess on a Mac, it would be Option Numeric 3. So in your quantize window here, the things that really matter for Elastic Audio are your grid, pretty much. That's the only thing that really matters, to be honest. So we're working within an eighth grid here, as we have it set. So that's what we're visually seeing, these blue lines behind it. So likely we're going to want to also set our grid to that in your quantize window, which fortunately it's already set to 1 8th. So if I hit apply now, it should shift all of these transients onto the blue grid lines. Let's see. So cool. So it did that there. And it looked like I kind of missed this one here. So, But if I go over it here and click it again, I got it this time. And then I can highlight all the way down to here. So I'm kind of doing sections because the thing is, if one of these transients is too close to the line you don't want to go to, say I want to go to this line right here, but it's actually closer to this line, it's going to snap to the nearest line. So that's why you have to be careful to Elastic Audio. So let me do a couple more here. Get this one. So this one here, see how it has three. So it's got a node in between. So if I was on a 16th grid, you would see this here. So my theory is though, that I have all these highlighted, it's going to ignore the middle one right here. Let's actually see what happens. Cool, so it ignored it because it had two lines on the left and right of it that were already pretty much on a grid line. So I know this may sound kind of confusing for people new to this, but it's, it's not that hard. You just gotta kind of pay attention, be careful when you do elastic audio. So here's another example here. You have this line here. So let me highlight over to here and let's see if it ignores this middle line and it did so that's good and let's continue on down here we're almost at the end so looking at this here i don't see well here's a prime example this note right here it's almost in dead center of here so it can go either way we want it to go to the right so what i would want to do is not do this whole passage because what's going to happen is you can see these lines are a little early so as I do these lines first, it's gonna actually shift this one closer or shift this one closer to where I want it to go. So check this out. So we'll just highlight these ones here, hit apply. And we'll get this one here, these two. Cool. So let me highlight these last ones here. And bam. So we just did that whole entire little octave passage there in you know, probably what, less than a minute and it should be in perfect timing now. Let's give it a listen. Pretty cool, huh? And we actually didn't really lose any quality on it. Um, now, the key to is when you finished doing elastic audio on a whole track. Now this is just the passage. I have this part and other parts of the song. I would want to go into um, my little funnel tool here and I would want to go down to X form. So when I click on this, you're going to see this waveform over here turn gray and it's going to do its thing. So let's see it in action. Cool. And let's give it a listen. <laughs> And if you were listening really close and especially listening headphones, you can actually tell there's a little bit of a quality difference. It sounds a lot better now. And that's what X form is for. It's basically once you're done processing your audio, getting it all time aligned, uh, you want to go in and change it over to X form that basically renders it and it's, it's there and saved. Now, don't worry. You can actually go back. It's not permanent. That's what's great about it. So, um, it's non-destructive editing. Now, XForm, I don't recommend using XForm on drums because XForm, um, I've actually heard it kind of mess up the tonal sound of the drums. So I don't really like to use it on drums. I like it on instruments that are playing actual notes. Sounds good on bass, sounds good on guitars. Again, vocals, uh, 
I would not use elastic audio on them, but if you did, you would want to X-form them because otherwise you may have artifacts in there that don't sound very good. If you stretch notes too far in elastic audio, you're gonna hear um, artifacts until you X-form them. X-form will correct them the best that it can. So we did an octave track there. So next let's actually do one of these drive guitar tracks. So for our drive guitar track here, we're gonna use drive guitar left. I put it in the center so we can hear it well. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through this quickly to show you how fast you can actually do elastic audio. So we'll hit the funnel tool here. We will hit polyphonic. We will go to warp. We will highlight our first passage here. Do alt numeric three on a PC or option numeric three on a Mac. We will hit apply. And we'll go over to here, grab all of these. We'll hit apply. Scroll on over and that's actually everything. So we did that whole track in, what was that, like less than 10 seconds? <laughs> so let's actually uh, give it a listen and see how it sounds time aligned. Cool, so it sounds pretty much perfect. All right, so throughout this tutorial, we added the two guitar tracks with Elastic Audio. We made their timing perfect. Sounds great. Um, so as mentioned before, I recommend Elastic Audio on any audio instrument except for vocals. And the reason I say that is because you're better off just getting Melodyne, which is a plugin. And in Melodyne, you can fix the pitch of your vocals and also the timing and several other things. You're just gonna get a much better sounding result with that. And we never wanna sacrifice vocal quality because that is the most important instrument in any song. So I hope you guys learned something in this tutorial and I hope you liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe because I love making this content for you. And hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I'll see you guys later and peace out.